So we were on the topic of Aikyam Vedanta. We finished that and uh, we saw how all these different distortions of the Jivatma and Paramatma are like faces getting reflected in the different mirrors of a playhouse. The difference, this is only seeming because of the reflecting mediums and the reality is only oneness. And from there, we came to looking at what is the um, benefit, the phalam of gaining this jnanam. One second. Yes. So we were coming to the benefits of what is... Um, Falam of gaining this jnanam and uh, what was ac exactly mukti, moksha, or liberation. So we will continue on that topic of who is the Jeevan Mukta. On your page 20, I will chant, you can repeat. Atta jnana falam vicharaha. Atta jnana falam vicharaha. Jeevan Mukta. अहमस्मीति Tata naham brahmano, Tata naham brahmano, Nashudro na purusho, Nashudro na purusho, Kintu asanga, Kintu asanga, Sachidananda swarupa, Sachidananda swarupa, Prakasha rupa, Sarvantaryami Sarvantaryami Chidakasha Rupo Asmiti Chidakara Rupo Dridnishche Rupaha Dridnishche Rupaha Aparoksho Gyanavan Jeevan Muktaha Jeevan Muktaha Brahmo Brahmo Smiti Brahmo Vaham Smiti Itya Paroksho Gyana Itya Paroksho Gyanena Itya Paroksho Nikila karma banda, Nikila karma banda, Vinir mukta syat, Vinir mukta Thank you. So the student is asking, what exactly, who exactly is this Jeevan Mukta? And the answer says, just as one has a firm belief that I am this body, I am a man, I am a Brahmin, I am a Shudra, and so also, this Jeevan Mukta has the firm belief that, so I'm not a Brahmin, I'm not a Shudra, I'm not a man, I'm, I'm of an attached nature, of the nature of Satchidananda, I'm effulgent, the indweller of all, the formless awareness. Does one having this firmly assay, ascertained Aparoksha Gyanam is a Jeevan Mukta. So the last class, we did talk about what is Aparoksha Gyanam. We said usually any Gyanam knowledge that we get is of two types. It is either Paroksha Gyanam, the direct knowledge of when you experience something, or it is, uh, sorry, Paroksha Gyanam, indirect knowledge when it is about a knowledge of an object away from you, like something you read in a book or someone tells about it to you, or it is pratyakshaganam, direct knowledge, which is perceivable by your own senses. But both these kinds of knowledge are about an object, right? But when we are talking about Brahman, it is not the object at all. It is the subject. It is you. 
Hence, this particular knowledge is so different from any other kind of knowledge. And this kind of knowledge is called Aparoksha Gyanam. This immediate, direct knowledge of I am that. And one who has this Aparoksha Gyanam is a Jeevan Mukta. So he says, we have all these presumptions that we grow up with, or which are all learned presumptions. We learn slowly that I'm a girl or a boy. Uh, we learn, oh, I'm a daughter to this uh, couple. Uh, there are these certain roles I have to play. And you create all these egos over time in um, in life. So these are all learned assumptions. So these all become firm beliefs. Uh, no matter how I try, I might not be able to convince you, no, you are not Poonam or you are not Shubhada and you are so-and-so because this has become a firm conviction. Just like you have this firm conviction of being Poonam or Shubhada uh, and you have this firm conviction that I am a woman and no one can convince you otherwise, it's uh, these are all learned uh, associations, and now we have to drop those learned associations and have equally firm conviction conviction of our true nature. So a Jeevan Mukta has this firm conviction. He knows that he is of the form of Satchitananda alone. He is the indweller of all. This body is a temporary medium that he is occupying. He is only the formless awareness. And uh, of course, I'm using the word he loosely. There is uh, Brahman is completely nirguna. So without any gunas like male or female. So these a Jeevan Mukta will not have any associations like um, with the body. So that's why it says he knows he's only the indweller of the body. Similarly, he will not have any associations like I'm a Brahmin or a Shudra or whatever inferior or superior qualities one might attach with these labels. So, and uh, it says uh, Sarva Antaryami. So the same consciousness which pervades all living beings like a thread, a mala. So a thread is inside every bead of the mala, but it is not visible. It holds all the beads together. It pervades, but it is unattached, right? So this is one of the examples this verse is giving us as qualities of Brahman. This example, of course, like every other example, has a limitation. Can someone tell me what that limitation is? Perhaps one of the older students. So when we use all these examples in Vedanta, we must always be aware that there is a limitations to these. So it's good to discern what is that limitation. So in Amala, uh, we are saying, we are using Brahman as this mala, the thread which pervades the mala and all the beads go through this mala. It holds the mala together. But in our example, the thread we are saying is different from the mala. But in our case, what is this world? What is this world in which we live in? What is the material of the world? It is the same material as Brahman itself. Ishwara's body is this entire jagat itself. So in our example, the limited example, the thread is different from the beads. But Brahman is not different from the world you live in. The Brahm Brahman is also not different from the body you are occupying. So whenever we say neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not this. We are clearly distinguishing that I'm distinct from this. I'm not different from this because in the end, there is only one material for this whole of creation. And that is Ishwara, Brahman himself. So 
I am Satchit, I'm Satchit Ananda Swarupa. So I'm Sat, that absolute existence. So I existed before this body ever came in. I am existing during this lifetime of the body and I will exist after this body perishes. Imagine the power of truly knowing that knowledge, having that knowledge as your own. It would mean that there is no more fear of death. So that's what Ajivan Mukta has. So many decisions we take in life are because of this fear of death, of simply wanting to survive. What we do for a living, how we spend our time on this earth is all determined by this. It also means no more fear of death of loved ones. Fear of loss is a deep trauma we all carry from several lifetimes. Again and again, we lost those dear to us and suffered due to it, not knowing that I actually cannot lose anyone. Such a loss is not possible. It's simply the body which has dropped, the consciousness which I am always survives. I am that consciousness which pervades the body-mind complex but is not connected to it, asanga. Hence, the death of the body does not affect Atma. Atma continues to exist. This is unconnected nature is called Asanga Swarupa. And the verse is using a few more analogies to explain this concept to us. So the author uses Akasha Swarupa and Prakasha Swarupa is the like space and light, he's saying. So why space and light? Because both these are formless, nirakara. They are divisionless. You cannot cut space or light with a knife or otherwise divide it. They are nirvikalpa. They are blemishless. They cannot be polluted or contaminated. The sunlight can light a dirty sewage water, but nothing will happen to the sunlight. It's nirmala. Pure. And these are all qualities of you, of Brahman. There is no boundary for uh, either of the space or light. So objects have boundaries. You might say the space inside this bottle, as you might call it space bottle, and the space outside this bottle, you can give a different name. But actually the boundary is only created by the bottle, is the same space which is inside and outside. So like the space, Brahman is boundaryless, is associated with every object, but not connected to any. The light right now is shining on my body, but it is not connected to, to the body. It's nisanga. So a jnani knows this. A jnani knows that this atma I am, he never says, I am the body. He knows he's temporarily using the body. Author says, uh, Naham Brahmana. Hence, I cannot say, I am Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. Cannot, cannot attach to any of the superior or inferior qualities you might think any of these Varnas have. Similarly, Naham Purusha, I am not a man or woman. Gender identity is dropped. Therefore, the author says, Yata, like an ignorant person who says, Deha ham, I am this body, and all these things, Iti drid nishcheya, such a strong conviction, a jnani has. A jnani has an equally firm conviction that I am Satchitananda Swarupa, I am Prakasha Swarupa, the Sarva Antaryami. So, Dhrid Nishya means this firm conviction and knowledge which is never forgotten. Like an actor playing a role, a good actor might really get into the role. He might play a beggar or a king. And um, if you see some wonderful actors in our time, like uh, Meryl Streep or um, Tom Hanks, for example, you will see they really embody that character. They will not only just be reading out the lines and the expressions, but they will change their entire posture 
to look like uh, that character that they are playing. And a lot of the times when you see these people on the screen, you will forget that they're an actor at all. And perhaps they themselves um, have this slight forgetfulness of who uh, they really are when they step into this role. But it's really there. As soon as the director says cut, they will know instantly who they are, probably, right? They will come back to their uh, normal posture and manner of speaking and such. So this Ajivan Mukta is like that. They always have this knowledge at the back of their mind, irrespective of the role that they're playing. And this is important to know because people often assume that a Jeevan Mukta, a liberated being, has, um, you know, looks different in some way or, uh, um, you know, does activities in a particularly different way. A Jeevan Mukta could be the person selling you your uh, morning chai at the chai shop. You will have no idea. Even uh, Arjuna asked Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, how does uh, Jeevan Mukta look? How does he walk? How does he act and such? And um, Lord Krishna ignores this question completely and instead talks about the internal qualities of a Jeevan Mukta. So for a Jeevan Mukta, there, uh, this, uh, the same situations will come that a non-liberated being will have. He's living in the same world where other beings are experiencing samsara, but there is no samsara for this Jeevan Mukta because he knows that this is not the ultimate reality. He knows he's simply an actor playing this role and he's playing out the karma of the body. So when um, this kind of firm conviction is there of your own nature, all the various worries that ignorant people, agnanis, have about getting old, death, all these will drop. The jnani is unaffected because he knows the body is only an incidental medium. Its nature of is to be born. When a body is born, the only thing guaranteed is it will die. Its nature is to go, uh, grow, to undergo changes, to decay and to finally perish. So there is no obsession with this body or the body of near and dear ones. Of course, it's looked upon as a temple in which Atma resides and healthy care is taken of it. Similarly, there will be no worries of money, job, kids, well-being, and so on. The jnani, depending on the role he's been placed in due to karma, will perform all the duties which come with the karma of the body. So if he's placed in the role of a householder with kids, he will perform the duties of being a householder, of supporting uh, the, the family and so on. However, the mortal eye becomes this temporary role I play in the dream called life. Just like the actor playing different roles, identifying with each role. He cries, the actor, when he has to cry, laughs when he has to laugh and is angry when he has to. You've experienced that yourself. Like when you see a really good movie, you know you're watching a movie, but you allow yourself to be moved with the movie. You might sometimes shed a few tears for the hero or the heroine on screen. And you might laugh uh, when something humorous happens. So you allowed yourself to be absorbed in a good movie, knowing it to be a movie. So it's like that for a Jeevan Mukta with in this waking state all the time. He is able to enjoy everything so or um, empathize with uh, people whom are suffering and such. But there is no, while there might be empathy, there might be, while there might be pain of the physical body, there is no suffering. That's the difference. So even when they're laughing and crying uh, in this role of life, it's not, of course, the same fluctuations, not to the same degree as an Agnani. Just like when you're watching a movie, 
um, the tears you shed are not as intense uh, if the hero dies on the screen as if the person in real life dies, right? So the fluctuations is not to the same level because that firm conviction, knowledge is always there. Just like, um, you know, you might have these tears when watching the movie, you might sometimes uh, see a gyani have tears out of empathy for someone. And nothing, though, will affect my completeness. The sense of purvatnam, fullness, is always present with the Jeevan Mukta. He knows that I don't depend on the world, nor does the world depend on me. Fulfillment uh, allows the Jeevan Mukta to be free of any limitations. So this is also the difference between love and attachment that we talked about. So a Jeevan Mukta doesn't mean uh, he's a cold sort of person who's incapable of showing love. In fact, a Jeevan Mukta can love even more freely because he's full of love. His very nature is love. When um, you have an excess of something, how do you feel? Uh, even as a child, if you had a lot of chocolates, you know, you would probably uh, go share it with your sibling or a friend. So when you have an excess of something, you feel like sharing out of love. That is the real love. But there is no expectation of getting anything back in return because that is just simply attachment. This are all the qualities of a Jeevan Mukta. And of course, all the five benefits we talked about in the introductory class of um, Jignyasa Nivritti. There's all these questions of who am I? Who is God? Why am I born? Uh, why is there suffering? All these mysteries are answered. There is Vidyananda Prapti. There is a joy born out of uh, knowing and assimilating this knowledge. And, and there is a, and this joy is different from any Vishayananda, which is subject to gradation. And it's subject to arrival and departure. With this Vidyananda is, is your UPS, your uninterrupted power supply. There is Karpan Nadivriti. Once I discover Ananda in this knowledge, I stop depending on external sources for happiness. There is Agatha Nivritti. This self-knowledge becomes a shock absorber, a coating like a raincoat, even the worst tragedy might create a disturbance, but I will recover and it won't become any kind of long-term trauma. The what and so what comes very close together. When an event happens, the wisdom directly takes over uh, the tragedy effortlessly and the true self is invoked. The tragedy of life becomes automatically insignificant. There is also dakshita prapti. There is an increase in efficiency in the day-to-day -day life because I don't uh, have desperate dependence and I'm free from the shocks of life. So the mind is relaxed and calm. And we know that a calm mind increases efficiency. So the FIR is reduced so you can focus on the task in hand. So all these benefits in full is moksha, which Ajivan Mukta enjoys while living. So the next question could be, and what happens at the time of death, which the next verse will get into. So far, any questions? Uh, yes, Pandanaji, uh, with the discussion on Jeevan Mukta, I would like to further clarify the difference between Jeevan Mukta and Nitya Mukta. Oh. Sometimes Nitya. this word is used as well for right. a liberated person. Nitya Mukta is all of you. It's uh, knowing that. Can you hear the dog barking or it's okay? I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There is. All right. So 
the Nitya Mukta is just everyone. Nitya, Nitya Mukta means ever free. So what happens at the end of all this Shravanam, Mananam, and Nididhyasanam? You will realize that at some point, remember, if you remember, we said the paradox of Vedanta is uh, it's only through seeking that you will come to this knowledge. But the seeker can never attain liberation because the identity of a seeker also must be dropped. So at some point in the journey, you will realize that I am ever free. And then there is no more seeking. That's when Vedanta has done its job. You realize that there was never any need to seek because I don't need liberation. I was always free. I always will be free. And I always was, am Brahman. That is Nitya Mukta. That realization. Thank you. Which, Thank you. Uh, and who is Nitya Mukta? All of you. You're just waiting to realize it. And the next question is, what will happen at the time of death? In the middle of your page 20. Brahmevaham asmiti. Brahmevaham asmiti. Itya paroksha jnane na. Itya paroksha jnane na. Nikila karma bandha. Nikila karma bandha. Vinir mukta syat. Vinir mukta syat. Thank you. So we chanted this already, but as we had this a while back. So by the immediate knowledge Aparoksha Gyanam, I am Brahman, one becomes free from the bondage of all karmas. So the topic everyone had so many questions of from the beginning of Tathvoda karma, we will enter it now. So the Chivan Mukta becomes free from the bondage of karma. If you remember, we said, Sorry. do you have a question? Muting everyone. So the Jeevan Mukta becomes free from the bondage of all karmas. Right. And uh, their bandhas, uh, their, these karmas are called bandhas, shackles. We saw before that uh, karma is, um, is the cause of birth. Right. So karma is also known as punya and papa karma, good karma and bad karma, loosely translated. Uh, so if karma is responsible for rebirth, at the time of death, uh, what happens? When uh, a jnani is free from all karmas, the implication is there will be no punar jarma, there will be no rebirth. You will not assume a new body. The freedom from this new body is called videha mukti. Deha is body. So Videha Mukti is a Jeevan Mukta when he dies is called Videha Mukti. Second. Apologies. I'm just putting do not disturb on my phone. <laughs> um so the word karma is now introduced so we will get into that as we all know by now sanskrit is a very contextual language we also saw the use of karma as action in like in the word karma indriyas our lives are uh, governed by a set of laws the physical laws and the subtle laws of karma Karma here is being used as punyam and papam. Like understanding the laws of physics is very useful to live in harmony with the world. Understanding the laws of karma is equally helpful to live this life in order to transcend it. So we know that every action produces a result. Correct. 
And what does every action have? Every action has two components. It has a seen portion and an unseen portion. Let's take this example we use often of, uh, say, uh, you're walking on the road, you see a person about to cross the street, uh, they're not looking well, and you see that an approaching bus might come and hit them. So trying to save them, you push this person. And what happens is uh, they get away from the bus, but they fall and they break their leg. So this action of pushing has two components, a seen portion that you pushed and an unseen portion, what was the intention behind? You pushed this person because you wanted to do something good. You wanted to save them from this approaching bus. And then there is, again, the result which happened also has two portions. There is a seen portion the seen portion was the person fell and broke their leg. And there is an unseen portion. That is the punyam or papam generated because of the action. So drishta action, the seen action, will produce the drishta result, the seen result. And the adrishta portion of the action, which is the intention, will produce the adrishta phalam which is the punyam or papam generated. So the same knife which is wielded by a robber can, will cause papam, whereas the knife wielded in the hands of a surgeon will cause punyam. So it's, it's not simply the action one performs, but the intention behind any of these actions which results in the punyam or papam. So that's the first part of uh, the law of karma, that every action and result have these seen and unseen portion and how they are connected. The punyam and papam, which is generated, the adrishta phalam, which is generated because of the intention, it goes into the book of jiva as credit. And then at some point, it will have to be debited. And it will be debited as pleasurable or painful experiences and sometimes mixed. Every punyam and papam which is accumulated is a seed for future pleasure and pain. And Shastra tells us that only human beings can create karma because only human beings have doership have the discrimination and discretion to understand what is good and bad. Animals do not premeditate evil deeds. Animals simply act as per their vasanas, their inbuilt tendencies. All other births besides a human birth are all bokta births, including all the devatas. All the devatas are also jivas which have this role because of a lot of punyam generated. But they're all bokta births. Even it's said that even the gods envy humans because it's only the human who have a chance to get liberated, to get out from the cycle of birth and death. Any questions so far on the drishta and adrishta portion? Now that the karma has been accumulated, how long will they take to fructify? That bit is a surprise. Shastra says that it's not uniform. Just like different seeds will take different amount of time to give fruit, a tomato plant will bear fruit in four months. A mango tree will take at least five years. There is this the coco de mer plant, in, which is native to a small island in Seychelles, which will take 20 to 40 years to give fruit. And all the punyam and papam generated because of your actions is the same. If you slapped someone in school, in your school days, they might have immediately slapped you back. 
or they held a grudge for the next 20 years and one day you show up for a job interview and the person on the other side of the table is the kid you slapped. So the action could take several years and even several lifetimes to come to a, a come into fruition because the right the exact right circumstances for that punyam or papam to fructify has to be there imagine all the conditions which have to be just right so it's not just um, you but the world you interact with all the people who are coming in your way um, that's why we meet um, a lot of our most intimate relationships are the ones we will learn our biggest lessons from your parents your partner these are the relationships karmic relationships meant to teach you the biggest lessons needed for your evolution this will also explain uh, the biggest mysteries of life the intrinsic belief that we must be good we wonder why do bad things happen to good people or um, some why do bad people seem to get away with the, the things they do and not suffer any consequences this kind of confusion would only be because we're looking at the limited time frame of this life but when we take the law of karma along with punarjanma this makes sense the doer the karta is always the bhokta the it's just that it sometimes it is a remote karta and hence it might not be clear any questions as you can see i'm in a new location um looking after a friend's dog and a beautiful one too <laughs> so the dog you hear barking is that dog uh, barking at the monkeys who have come <laughs> so let's continue chanting on your uh, page 20 now we will get into what is the types of karma Karmani Kati Bidani Santi Iti Chet Santi Santi Iti Chet Agami Sanchita Agami Sanchita Prarab the Prarab Dena Prarab Dena Trividani Santi the author says, if thus asked, iti chet, how many types of karma are there? Here, karma refers to punyam papam, like I said. So there are, and the answer comes, there are three, three types of karma. Agami, Sanchita, and Prarabdha are the three kinds of karma which are there. so let's let's get into this the karma earned and accumulated across several births is called sanchita sanchita itself means accumulated and out of this big basket of karma that you've accumulated over several lifetimes there is uh, one portion is taken and allocated for each birth. We said karma is responsible for birth. The, the, the specific cause, the vishaya karanam of uh, every birth, the general cause was the five elements, and the specific cause was the karma. Why I have this particular body and gender and circumstances in life, certain inclinations, 
All this is because of this, this specific portion of karma which was allocated to this body at the time of birth. This is called prarabdha karma. It will determine the kind of birth we get. Will it be a human birth, a plant birth, an animal birth? What kind of circumstances will you be born in? Uh, which city uh, will you have? Uh, will you be born into a family with money or a poor family? Will you be born into a spiritually inclined family or a materialistic family? Will you have a healthy body or will suffer from a lot of disease? Uh, this um, the talents that you might have, the tendencies that you might have, the vasanas, the personality traits or habitual tendencies. So this prarabdha karma will affect you in two ways. It will affect you as the bhokta, the receiver, by affecting all the different situations which can come to you in life. In not just the circumstances of your birth, but what specific instances might come into your life. Um, will there be a possibility of a big accident um, at a particular point? Or uh, there is, a, is there a possibility of uh, someone coming into your life who will become your future life partner? So it will determine all these different circumstances and that's what astrologers, Jyotishas do. They're able to read the chart to see what are the different circumstances which are coming to you in life. However, what is uh, wrongly done when this reading is done is that it's taken as predeterministic. There is nothing predeterministic about it because only the situations which come to you in life are predetermined, but the outcome is not predetermined. And why is that? Because there is free will. There is, you have a capacity to act, the capacity to act a particular way, decide which way you want to act when these circumstances come your way. And that is because of free will. Of course, a huge portion of how you will act will also be determined by your vasanas, which is again a result of prarabdha karma. This karma is also affecting you as the karta, the doer, because it gave you certain personality traits that these inbuilt habitual tendencies which determined uh, how you might instinctively act. For example, someone might have a capacity for anger or uh, another person might have a high capacity for tolerance. And, uh, someone might have um, an incredible talent for music or mathematics uh, and others might have, um, you know, a, a talent for singing and arts or so on. So, it also affects you as the karta. So when these situations come, the you act as per your instinctive tendencies, but you also have your buddhi and your free will. So you can decide to overcome your instinctual tendencies and act accordingly. So the do dog behind me is constantly barking because its instinctive tendencies is for it to be territorial. So there is a group of monkeys passing by and on its on her territory, and she is programmed by instinct to bark. Of course, you could train a dog to get over this instinct, but uh, you're just you're playing. But still, you the dog will not develop any kind of free will to act on their own. You will train the dog, say with treats or uh, some other kind of bribery like uh, good words um, and change that conditioning so then the dog becomes capable of acting as per that new conditioning but we humans have free will we can decide not to act as per conditioning right so if you have a tendency for anger you can decide 
to watch that anger and not instinctively act as per that anger. That is the uh, that's the job of uh, free will. So when coming back to our astrology example, so our astrologer could tell you, a good astrologer could tell you what situations might come in life, but it's so subject to interpretation. I wouldn't, if you have to uh, go to an astrologer, I wouldn't really recommend you to uh, use it for that. It would be perhaps better to maybe use that chart to know your vasanas because if you know your instinctive tendencies you can then act on improving those vasanas towards the direction which will be conducive for your goals right you have to also remember that it can only tell you the vasanas at the time of birth and everyone many of you here might have been very fiery in your teenage years or in your early 20s but over time calm down because you saw that uh, acting uh, purely from that place of temper is not serving you so you worked at getting over your anger this your tendency for anger so all these vasanas can be changed with effort This is Prarabdha Karma, which will affect you as both the Karta and Bhokta in this birth. Any questions? Someone miss? Alka ji, you have a question? Uh, yeah, can you just draw a little more light on what exactly Vasanas are and how you can change the impact of that. Vasanas is defined as the um, Vasanas is defined as the habitual tendencies or thinking patterns which are a result of repeated impressions over this lifetime or past lifetime. Now we're saying um, it can be an impact of past lifetime also. And I suppose I do I don't I have a certain vasana, maybe I'm I'm prone to anger and I don't want to carry it into my next life. So mm -hmm. what uh, what can one do for in a situation like that? So you look at, um, so what is, you can work with the gunas, for example. There's so many techniques, but say if we want to take the yogic example of working with the gunas, um, uh, anger is, <laughs> my friend is giving the dog a bone so it can stop barking which is not a good way to train it but anyway uh, which doesn't seem to have helped <laughs> there is one more dog inside otherwise I would have taken the class there <laughs> anyway so when you you can look at um, what is the quality of anger it is rajas right and um, it's the quality of activity and it's rajas out of balance. How do you um, curb rajas? You can curb it with introducing more sattva in your life. You can include more sattvic activities, more sattvic impressions, uh, spending time consuming, uh, like you're all doing now, consuming more sattvic inputs like Vedanta. Uh, you can be in an environment which is more sattvic, quiet, and um, good for contemplation. You can introduce practices which are sattvic, like yoga and pranayama and meditation. You can address it that way. In the very situation, you can always, just this knowledge of knowing that you're not a slave of your tendencies itself can be very powerful. Second, keep up. Apologies. Um, so that's 
I was saying just being aware of your vasanas can be very powerful, right? So when a situation happens as a spiritual aspirant, what we do is we always turn the attention inwards. When a circumstance happens, a person, a friend, um, or even a stranger did something uh, which uh, gave you this reaction of anger and you can watch yourself and you can know that it's the tendency for anger which is coming up and you can point your attention inwards. What usually happens is we point the attention outwards. We say, oh, this person did this thing, so hence I'm angry. But it's also good to remember that no one has a capacity to make you feel anything. It's uh, it's only yourself who's responsible for your feelings. So even if the person, another person acted in a particular way, it, the, it's still up to you to decide how you want to act. So when you observe this anger emotion in you, you can see uh, what is there to learn from it. You can become curious about it. What is it that it is triggering within me? Right, which is making me uh, feel this way. Of course, it doesn't mean you don't take the, you don't become a doormat and don't uh, do the, put up with some kind of abuse or wrong behavior from other people. You can still choose to act, um, do the actions which is required in the situation, but there is no need for the internal disturbance. And in fact, it will, any action you take will be much more uh, fruitful if you're doing it from a regulated place. Does that help? Someone else had a question? Hare Krishna Ji. There's yes. one more thing I'd like to ask you. From the point of seeker, I'm asking it. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody's rushing down to get out of this cycle. Of he wants a liberation. Okay. So initially, initially, Not there is very, a, very few people are for the seeker. For the seeker, seeking. I'm talking about the seeker. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is the final goal actually. Mm -hmm. So initially, there must have been an entry ticket for the birth initially. Once you are out of the cycle, so it must have been you have to get into the birth the first time. Mm -hmm. So was there anything we can know that was there any kind of set of protocols laid down for the karmas, the gunas, the vasanas for no, that? What did, we, what did we say? What are the two anadi principles? What the were they? Beginning, beginningless principles. Do you remember? Uh, I was no, never sorry, born. Please. I was never First, born. No, yes. So Brahman and Maya yeah. are both anadi. Yes. Are both beginningless. Yeah. By beginningless, it means they were. There was never a point. It started. Auto generated. There was no, there was no cause. So Maya, which is responsible for all this jagat and jivas and uh, the karana shariram uh, it's a very karana shariram itself it's the cause it's the beginningless cause without any other cause so that is the one question there is no answer for why okay. why all this uh, you know why this creation why this play of um, um, playing this role of a jiva of a seeker of for getting liberation there is no answer to this why because there was no beginning i guess the ones who have the answers would be might be the liberated ones and at some point uh, they simply stop caring because you realize that you were nitya mukta just like when you go to sleep every night uh, you might encounter all these um, different situations in your dream you might uh, win a 
pot of gold in your dream, but you don't wake up and expect to have that pot of gold there with you, yeah. or you might suffer in the dream and uh, you don't um, feel bad for who what generated that dream because where did that dream generate from? It generated from within your own mind, with from the complete dream world came as a product of your mind. So who do you blame in that? Was there someone else who was responsible for that dream? No, it was you yourself. Is there someone else responsible for that this creation for um, all the good or the bad you think is happening in the world? No, there is just you. So in a way, we can we can we can blame Brahman for this. Blame that is your if he's, you want to that's yourself. The, sorry, sorry to say, but I mean, the it's it, it is only there. I mean, Brahman is but there. Who, we are Brahman. Who is Brahman? That's yourself. Hey, we are Brahman. <laughs> the thing to realize with this Just to realize that Brahman, is there so. is no one else but you. So there is no one else who's responsible for any good or hap bad which happens to you. There is only you. There's just two minutes left. So there's one more kind of karma. I will give it. I won't read the next part, but uh, I will just say. So the third karma, which is agami karma, it is the karma which we generate in this life itself that we will discuss in the next class. So for now, we can. Um, Take more questions if there are, because it's almost nine o'clock. Mahalakshmi, you wanted to ask some questions? No, no questions. I just had a few thoughts which I put out. Okay. All right. And you're right, recognizing one's vasana is a step towards working towards it, like I mentioned. So we understood what is Sanchita and what is Prarabdha Karmas. The big basket of karma and Prarabdha is the karma which is there in this lifetime. Okay, if there's no more questions. We can end the class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purna Mudachate Purna Mudachate Purna Se Purna Mada Purna Meva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Yom Hari Yom Hari Guru Pyo Namaha Guru Pyo Namaha Thank you Thank you Spandana Thank you You too